So, um, I'd like to talk about Singularity University. Who will start? Uh, maybe I will. Okay, Peter, you start. Uh, so, yourself down. I want to set the setting. It's, uh, it's, 19, it's 1982, and Bob Richards and Todd Hawley and I are friends, uh, and we are in Vienna, Austria, at the uh, International uh, Second United Nations Conference on Peaceful, Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. We meet, Ar meet Arthur C. Clarke, and Arthur says, you know, uh, back when I was growing up, uh, I used to know everybody in space, and the concept came out of eventually <clears throat> led us to form a university that we founded in 1987, uh, at MIT called the International Space University. Absolutely, and the, and the dream was to bring together like-minded people around a common pod, a theme of space, but study it from different directions, multidisciplinary, international, and intercultural. So ISU was a place that we would bring together the smartest, best people from every discipline in every country, the notion being that there wasn't a single discipline or, or nation that was gonna be help us open up space. It was an international, interdisciplinary, intercultural university. So we had our founding conference in 1987 and... Had our absolutely first session in 1988. We now have 21 successful years behind us with 2,600 very motivated enzymes of humanity bringing the vision of a universal future in space together, making it happen. ISU was not so much uh, a teaching institution as it was a beacon to attract the people who could make things happen. So you come to ISU if you're a, uh, a business major interested in space. We have typically 30 countries there. Uh, you will learn about space architecture. You'll learn about space business and management as well, but you'll take space life sciences and policy and law and space sciences and engineering and humanities. So you learn about every discipline so you understand the interactions. So about a year ago, I was in, uh, I was in Chile and I brought Ray's book, The Singularity is Near With Me. It was actually probably a year and a half ago. And I'm reading this book, and it, you know, something I believe in my heart, I'm a singula singularitarian. Uh, singularitarian. Singularitarian. We have to come up with an easier word yeah. to say. So. <laughs> um, and in my heart of hearts, and the, the concept instantly snapped. We need to create a, uh, a singularity university around the same principles that Bob and Todd and I had done of across disciplines, across nations. And so we contacted Ray and... So to, to flesh out this idea a little bit, there's three underlying themes, which are three overlapping revolutions that are now getting started. Uh, the one that's furthest along, which I just started talking about, G, these go under the letters G and R. Uh, G stands for genetics, which is really the biotechnology revolution, the ability to reprogram biology, which of course, con uh, concerns all of us a great deal. And the tools to do that are the ability to model, simulate biology, design interventions on computers, test them out in silicon, and uh, actually change who we are uh, is, is doubling every year. It'll be a thousand times more powerful in 10 years. And there's nanotechnology, the ability to actually create macro objects at the molecular level to basically reassemble the molecules of the world to create physical products. Right now I can email you an attachment and you can turn that information file into a movie or a book or a sound recording. Those used to be physical products. Well, in the future I can email you something and you can then print it out with your three-dimensional printer. And there already are these three-dimensional printers at a formative stage, but in the future you could print out a blouse or a meal. Uh, and basically all the physical things that you need in the world will be information files. So that's the promise of nanotechnology. I believe we're only 20 years away from that. And then R stands for robotics, but the real key is artificial intelligence. Capturing, understanding, modeling, and recreating uh, the powers of intelligence, which is arguably the most uh, important phenomena in the world. And we're, that, that loop is already working. We're already understanding certain aspects of how the, br the brain works, for example, we figured out certain aspects of auditory perception and used that in our speech recognition work and got a big boost in performance. Uh, so there's already a loop of understanding how the brain works from the 50,000 uh, scientists and engineers studying the brain, feeding back into artificial intelligence. But, and I'll make the argument tomorrow that we are within 20 years of really modeling and simulating all the regions of the brain 
and then applying it to the very powerful computers we'll have 20 years from now. And, but this won't be an alien invasion of intelligent machines. This will be extending who we are uh, because we are merging with the te this technology. The fact that you can now take out a device in your, from your pocket and with a few keystrokes access all of human knowledge, that's an extension already of human intelligence, but we're going to go much further than that. And all of these phenomena are you know, growing exponentially, so they will be you know, billions of times more powerful decades from now and really will transform who we are. It'll be a singularity of a profound transformation of the human machine civilization. And I think this is where maybe the, the two ideas come together because ISU, the International Space University, was to prepare humanity for a grand transition to the next stage. And the singularity is another grand evolution of humanity that we need to prepare humanity for. So we have, uh, we've teamed up uh, uh, with uh, the president of the International Space University, Mike Simpson, who's a wonderful man, and uh, Pete Warden, who runs Ames, and we are holding the founding meeting of the Singularity University uh, at the end of uh, September. And we've, uh, uh, Ray and the other founders here have brought together about uh, 50 of the smartest people on the planet to lay out the curriculum in genomics, nanotechnology, artificial intelligence, robotics, space, energy, uh, as such. And you will come to this university from around the planet and you will study each of these areas and interaction thereof and how this will affect humanity the patent systems, the legal systems, the ethical and moral systems, all of these aspects as well as the new concepts. We will attack blindness from a singular, singularitarian point of view or environmental issues. Uh, <laughs> so what we, uh, I'll bring it to Moses here. So uh, right, um, I'll, give you, I'll give you just one more small example. Uh, nanotechnology being applied to solar panels can make, is already making them more efficient. Uh, and in fact, Larry Page and I just got done with the National Academy of Engineering white paper and blue ri from a blue ribbon panel to examine energy among other issues. It came up with a plan where within 20 years we can completely replace fossil fuels with solar energy because we actually have 10,000 times more sunlight than we need to meet 100% of our energy needs. We just need more efficient uh, solar panels, which we'll get from nanotechnology. So that's just one implication of the nanotechnology revolution, which is one of the three themes of this universe. Well, listening to these guys talk, I mean, they're the proof of Arthur Clarke's observation that he's sufficient for new technology is indistinguishable from magic. These guys, I don't know, they have a wig bubble, they have a beer, and uh, they put a plan for a university into the replicator and poof. <laughs> How it comes, I mean, infinite, small, tiny, mundane details. Where does the money come from? Where does the charter come from? Where the buildings come from? Where the teachers come from? I have no idea how you guys have done it, except what you've done. And we're going we're gonna to do it again. Uh, we have our 50, uh, 50 academics and uh, CEOs that are coming together from the Bay Area, having the Bay Area. We made, we made uh, slots for 10. Uh, Ten financier founders, and uh, Moses stepped up to be one of the first of those, and, or the post of the first of those uh, individuals. So thank you, Moses, for helping uh, found this university. <laughs> I'm still bewildered by it all, but. And the beautiful thing is, this university, while it runs for a 10-week program for the grad students, during the year it will offer a two-week program where, you know, CTOs and CEOs can come and see what does the next 10 years look like. The, the buildings were easy. We borrowed them from NASA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ames, uh, Peter mentioned, is the NASA Ames Research Center uh, in Silicon Valley in California. Well, you're all silver-tongued orators as far as I'm concerned because I am utterly persuaded. Now, now this is a secret, right? We're not, it's not a secret. Don't anything. tell anybody. <laughs> That's swell, guys. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Very Thank exhilarating you. session. Oh, fabulous, right?